feeling is sheer excitement and mentally just be ready for the climb that you have planned for there's a tremendous sense of excitement because uh, it takes weeks and weeks of hard training to to get up there on the mountain it's happened many times to me i think sometimes the bad weather follows me it happened uh, in stoke kangri where i was going for the summit and i got caught up in deep snow and it came up till here about 4 feet and i turned back and at that time my whole life flashes in front of me and i think what am i doing here why can't i be just like normal people and uh, sitting at home or doing a regular job what is it that drives me up here it brings you down to the earth a sense of reality sets in and it just shows you how unpredictable life is at that moment sometimes you are your life is in danger and you feel that am i going to get through this summits are really special because you have built up mentally to reach the summit long time before you actually even come on the mountain so when you reach the summit it is sheer perseverance and your feeling of uh, that i have gone through this and it's not easy and when you've reached the summit it's like a dream has been actualized i feel very emotional it's a tremendous sense of achievement it's like nothing that i feel anywhere else and you just can't believe you're up there you get fantastic views you can see high peaks all around you and it's it's the closest thing to heaven i think when you're up there on the summit we spent a lot of holidays during our childhood growing up around the hills in dalhousie and then of course when i started uh, going to a boarding school our midterm holidays were spent uh, going for trekking small little expeditions here and there i belong to the town of jammu in jammu and kashmir so it all started when i was very young and we would go in a group to vishnu devi and come down it all started in a big way when i decided that i must climb mount kilimanjaro before i turned 50 i think that was really the beginning of a passion for climbing it happened over one breakfast that we decided that we must try and fulfill his dream of going to kilimanjaro after i decided to kilimanjaro to go to kilimanjaro i asked uh, sangeeta do you want to come with me and she said yeah okay so that's how we set out on our first climb and then we summited kilimanjaro on 31st december 2011 and that's when the serious climb came to my mind that i'm in my mid 40s and i'm doing this and i've summited 19341 feet i am stunned the disopius what and get up and all the years i spent in this school I remember coming on that plane back from Kilimanjaro and we saw this mountain in the background we could see it from on top of the plane I said we climb that mountain we have to do something else now and then the idea to start serious climbing began So we started our journey towards the seven summits and I set out a plan for climbing each of these summits depending on the season and the hemisphere so slowly and slowly we are gaining experience to towards the seven summits now we've got five summits left and the next one is antarctica which is going to be really exciting because it's going to be really cold over there we are set for the next two years almost less than two years to do mount mckinley in america in june then we have castings pyramid in oceania mount akankagua 
in South America, which will be 2014, uh, 15, sorry, and we have the big mountain, Mount Everest in 2015. And I wish to mark my 50th year on Mount Everest. That's my goal. Mount Everest is supposed to be one of the easiest of the seven summits. After Kilimanjaro, it's it was supposed to be a breeze. I mean, everybody just said, oh yeah, I mean, the summit is just, you know, there, you could see it every day. And, and as usual, it was, you know, a little tougher than we thought. And uh, there was a lot of snow and uh, there was very strong winds. And very soon, we realized that it was a lot colder than we had expected. got so bad that everything was iced up, all our clothes were iced up, we could, we had to keep removing the ice from our goggles and the snow was getting deeper and I just soon realized that we really didn't know whether we were going in the right direction and all I was concerned at that moment was that, uh, you know, all of us should be safe and of course, you know, my, my topmost priority was that I should keep my sights on Sangeeta and I kept trying to help her, you know, by, by trying to shout across to her and, and tell her what to do. And, and soon I found that she was quite a few feet away from me and I could not see her. So, you know, I had to sort of really struggle to find her. And then after a little while, it was like a complete whiteout. It was so white and plain that I did not know whether to go up or to go down because it, I could not feel the ground below me. I felt there was nobody around me. It was the scariest moment of my life thinking everybody's abandoned me and I don't know what to do. It was something that I can never forget because I could not see my husband. He was quite a few climbers behind me. I could not hear anything. The winds were so severe and plus I started feeling cold. So at that time all these things came together and the only thing that came to my mind is I should find a path and I should go down from the mountain. Why for charity is something that is inborn in me. I remember going to the SOS village one day with some gifts and it was this girl's birthday. She had lost her parents in the tsunami that came near south of India. So I had adopted her when she was, I think, six months old. And I went to see her and she was celebrating her first year. The look on that child's face, how it lit up, not just with the gifts that I had got her, but also with the love that she showered on me and it really touched my heart. So when we met Smile Foundation, we found that there is synergy between us and they understood the idea. We wanted to climb for charity. Uh, which is a concept which is uh, not really prevalent in India but in the UK and the US a lot of people do a lot of climbing for charity they raise money when they are climbing and, and the money goes to the charity and it helps them and it also uh, it, it brings about awareness in people about that particular charity and that's how you know we raise money I think charity for kids in India you look around, you see, you see kids with no parents, no support, no money, but they have s such big dreams. And we as privileged society members have enough that we can give out. You have to reach out and make a difference to the lives of people who don't have the opportunity to make something out of their lives just because they can't afford it, because they've not been born in privileged families. I've seen people spending crores on the wedding, but they will not give it on charity. Why not? Just see the difference it can make to our, our economy, to our country, to our education, to our employment. And kids, you see the smile on their faces once you start interacting with them. They are just amazing. 
they are just amazing come with us for a journey a chance for us to give back to society climb with us to the highest point on earth let's climb for a cause let's, let's climb, climb for, for a smile, smile.